Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shauna Randolph, Edmonton Humane Society spokesperson, welcoming you to our February 2012 Edmonton Humane Society's podcast, coming to you live from the Fuse Logic Studio in Sherwood Park. We are located just east of Edmonton, and what a pack show we have for you. Let me tell you about it. Coming up, Edmonton Oilers star Ryan Smith and his family invite us into their home for a visit to show how two adorable kittens adopted from the Edmonton Humane Society a couple of months ago are doing with their family as they talk about their experiences and how the adoption is helping their kids be more responsible pet owners. Also coming up, we showcase a special visit to our shelter by some other oilers, a trio of heartthrobs who all fell in love with some of our shelter dogs gearing up to Valentine's Day. It's a very cute video. You will not want to miss that. And as usual, we do have Evan Adams from Fuse Logic behind the scenes. There he is. Hi. Good morning, afternoon. Now, he pretty much does almost everything behind the scenes as well as running our live chat room. If you have any questions that you would like answered during the show, ask in the chat room, and we will do our best to get them answered before we wrap up the show here this afternoon. Let's start with our hot topic of the month, the aftermath of that horrible cold snap that we endured back in January. You remember the temperature dipped to, well, almost minus 40 at one point anyway, and that meant severe frostbite for many homeless animals, especially stray cats and kittens, who then made their way into our shelter. Our shelter medical staff members have been kept very busy treating poor felines suffering the effects of frostbite on their ears, on their tails. We even had some of them have amputations with their tails in order to help them out. It's been very heartbreaking for us to see so many of them that suffered. As we hear from one of our veterinarians, her name is Dr. Anthea Smith, and here's that for you now. Dr. Smith, medical staff here have been very busy dealing with frostbite cases. That's right. After the cold spell, we've been seeing many cats and kittens with frostbite. And more so than, I guess, in other times of winter because of that cold snap, and it was really, really cold. It was. It was about minus 30, and we're seeing the frostbite on their ears, on their tails, on their paw pads. Um, so it's just something that I hate to see. Poor kitties. So that is a reminder to please try to keep your cats indoors. It really is best for them to prevent heartache while exposed to too many dangers, especially in the winter time. And a reminder, if you park your vehicle outside in the winter, remember to always bang its hood a couple of times before you get in there because there's many stray cats that'll climb up into the vehicle's engine to try and snuggle up to something quite warm. You don't want a cat there when you start up your engine, so please be careful with that. And you never know when the next cold snap will be in our area. Even though, well, we are in the middle of February, there still is a chance we could still have one before the spring settles in. We are in Alberta, after all. Here is a reminder about what to keep in mind about animals and cold weather, the misconceptions that really can cause animals distress and pain. Hi there, I'm Humane Officer Gray from the Animal Protection Department at the Edmonton Humane Society. We just wanted to give you a little bit of information about animals outside in cold weather. The Animal Protection Department lately has been receiving a lot of complaints about inadequate shelters for dogs being left outside. So an inadequate shelter would be a very kennel or a traveling case that's left outside uh, just with blankets to provide them with the insulation. This is absolutely an inadequate shelter as the elements can get to the animal from any direction, from the front and from the sides and from the back, and the blanket will freeze and get cold. Dogs sweat through the pads of their feet, um, which in turn is going to make that pillow cold, and then it's going to freeze. A proper shelter would consist of an insulated dog house, and that could be insulated with straw, um, or another type of bedding, but not blankets. You want to make sure that that uh, dog house is filled up with straw as much as possible, has a flap door, and the dog is easily able to get inside and move around and create kind of a little nest or burrow in there. Um, again, if you're leaving water out for your dogs or your animals outside, you want to be very careful and make sure that you're providing them with a heated water dish. A metal water dish um, will have the water freezing inside and the dog can also get its tongue stuck to the dish. So make sure it is a heated plastic water dish. 
If you are taking your dog outside for a walk, you want to make sure that they are dressed appropriately. And this is really good while you're doing those short intervals here, taking them outside to run off some energy. So like Garnet has, he's got some boots here that fit him well. They've got a nice safe Velcro top so that they stay on his feet and um, fleece lining as well. There's jackets that'll fit any size of dog. Animals can get frostbite very, very quickly on it areas such as their ears or even their tail. They can take a while to show up though and you will be noticing that uh, the ears or the tails, they could become hard and they will start to change colors. You want to watch for the ears starting to turn red showing that they're cold or getting stiff and hard and that's definitely a sign that the animal does need to come inside and get warm quickly. If you are witnessing any concerns of neglect within the city of Edmonton, you certainly can call our Animal Protection Department directly at 780-491-3517. Alternatively, if you believe that the animal is not in distress but you do want to discuss the concern, we do have an online complaint form that can be found on our website at edmontonhumanesociety.com. If you live outside the city of Edmonton, there certainly are organizations that can be contacted to report animal neglect, such as the Alberta SPCA, and their direct line is 780-447-3600. But if you do need any information or you are concerned, please do call our Animal Protection Department and we'll give you the best advice that we can. And now, as part of our monthly success story section, a visit from people who, well, may know him as former broken puppy Humphrey. Well, former, because that's what we used to call him, and his mom. We're going to tell you about him right now. Humphrey first came to us a month before uh, October of 2009. He was just struck by a car. He was left at the side of the road. A good Samaritan saw him there, stopped his vehicle, loaded him in. He brought Humphrey to us. This puppy was in horrible shape. After his time with us, he had four surgeries in our care because of his internal injuries. It was touch and go for him, but he bounced back. He really did well with his recovery, so much so that he was placed up for adoption, put on that adoption floor after four weeks of treatment and recovery. He found his forever home immediately with the Bryants of Edmonton. And that is who we have right near here with us, Salem Bryant, her husband John, who's off to the side. But Salem here on set with Humphrey. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. And welcome, Humphrey. I have to say I had a soft spot with him because I was there when he came in and the video that everyone just saw, I was videotaping it. That was what I did. So he was in horrible shape and it's just so great. He's healthy. He's very perky and, and with us. So thank you. Are you trying to go? He wants to go play. <laughs> Take me back, Salem, to when you first came into the Edmonton Humane Society. You weren't coming to get Humphrey at the time, were you? No, there was um, a little black chihuahua that came in with the uh, California canine cuties. And that's what John and I specifically went to look for because we saw the picture of her on the website. And I showed John because I was like, I want a little dog. John's like, all right. <laughs> so we wanted to go see and everything else. So... We separated when we got in the door, so right. that way it was really, really busy that day and probably because of the little California dogs coming in. Mm -hmm. So we figured it'd be easier if one went one way and the other one went the other way. And I couldn't find her, so I think I wasn't looking in the right spots, but I went to go find John and he didn't even make it past Humphrey's door. Like he just saw little paws up on the door, the little nose and the <laughs> wag and tail, just checking everything out and that was it. Like we yep. would not leave that room for anything if one person had to go to the bathroom one person was staying in the room like there was no way we were leaving them and we went home with them yeah you were making sure he was right there and that happens a lot when we bring in animals uh, that get a lot of attention from let's say california people get in with the hype but they fall in love with an alberta board and here's a big example of that so when you took him home of course you knew his history that he had gone through four surgeries he mm -hmm. was at one point in horrible shape and recovering but that didn't deter you anyway you knew you had a little bit of extra care yes we did i mean he even ended up with a little bladder infection when we got home mm -hmm. so you know off to the vet we went and they did the best that they could and of course antibiotics and He's been fine. Yeah. Hasn't had any issues since. And of course, because of floppy ears, the odd little ear infection. But, you know, that's normal with floppy ear dogs. So it's not like anything out of the ordinary that you would do right. with 
what he went through. Totally meant to be. Hey? Oh, yeah, definitely. And definitely. he does well with your two cats at yes. home? He does His very buddies. well. Yes, they play lots. They chase each other around the house. You know, he gets pinned by our fat cat. And, you know, they just, they love each other. They'll snuggle with each other and sleep and, mm -hmm. you know, share their beds. So he's uh, doing quite well. And he's smart, you were telling me. Yes, yes. He dances and he walks. You dance. Yes, you yeah. do. On command. Yes. Yeah, and he's gone through some good training. Yes, he has. So he knows when we're eating supper, you know, where his bed is. Like, we don't even have to tell him anymore. Right. You know, he, as soon as the plates come out on the table, he's in his little bed. And yeah. he waits until the doors open before he runs outside. And, you know, he does, he was just so easy and quick to train. Yeah. Like Well, Havanese are, I think, known for, for that. And he is Havanese from what uh, we gathered when he came in and and just so sweet and comfortable with you. And we are just so tickled that it was a story that we didn't know what kind of state he was going to end up in. He was really, as I said, in, in a bad condition. And he's just fantastic and with you in his forever home. And oh, wonderful. And you say he gives kisses. Will he give you a kiss on command? Uh, maybe. Do you think? Do I get a kiss? Oh, yes, <laughs> wonderful. My kisses. Yeah, it's oh, good. Boy. good. Salem, thank you for coming in. And Humphrey and John, who's off to the side. <laughs> thank you. And, of course, we will keep tops on him. He was our poster puppy, as we call it. He's on the front page of our 2009 annual report and a little story in there, so you can, you can read up on him. Thank you, Humphrey. We'll see you again very soon. Stick around. We're going to have a very short break right now, and we're going to take you into the home of Oilers fan favorite, Ryan Smith. His family adopted from us. They share their story. Don't go away. Meet Valentina. She was brought to the Edmonton Humane Society on January 24th, very nearly dead from starvation. This poor girl had been left in a vacant apartment for nearly a month with no food and no fresh water. Her owner had moved and during this hectic time, someone lost track of the cat. They thought maybe she escaped through a door or a window and was astray on the city streets. The property manager allowed the owner back into the suite a few times to see if they could find the cat but there were no signs that she was still there. The property managers entered the suite nearly a month after the move and were shocked to find the emaciated cat lying in the middle of the floor, collapsed on her side, barely hanging on to life. They rushed her to us. Our skilled medical staff immediately took over assessing her and quickly started treatment to save her life. She was uh, in very poor condition. She was sort of able to uh, stand up and move around. She actually went into a full seizures uh, that afternoon just after we'd, we'd been dealing with her. Just that little bit of stress put her over the edge and she started seizuring. She is, was definitely in very poor condition when she arrived and she still is, is in pretty critical care. We've uh, just had her on supportive fluids to get her hydrated again. Uh, she's been offered food and she has been eating, eating some. Uh, so that's a relatively good sign, so it's just a, a wait and see at this point whether she is able to uh, pull through and whether her, her liver and the rest of her organs are going to go back into normal functioning. It's a really an ongoing battle at this point. We're not sure where it's going to end. We have not been able to reach the cat's former owner despite several attempts and the cooperation of the property managers, so the cat now belongs to EHS. My name is Jocelyn and I'm the Funds Development Manager here at the shelter and I'm also a volunteer foster parent for animals that come into our care. The cat's going to continue her recovery with me over the next few weeks um, after having been in our animal hospital for five days of critical care. I chose the name Valentina for her because it means healthy and strong which is what we're hoping was the outcome for her. As Dr. Lang said, her case is touch and go because her systems had basically shut down and we don't know if they'll all begin to function again. Valentina has been in my home since Sunday, January 29th. She's gained over half a pound during that time, which is fantastic. Valentina doesn't much like taking her pills though. And for a cat that's so weak and so thin still, she can put up a pretty good fight when it's time to, to take the pills and she even knows the sound of the pill bottle opening. I'll be giving you updates on Valentina's progress. Her fate is still very uncertain, 
but we hope that she turns the corner on her road to recovery very soon. Please stay tuned to Facebook to watch for updates as Valentina's story unfolds. Welcome back. And an update, by the way, to Valentina. She has gained a few pounds, so keep watching, especially our Facebook page, to find out more about it. Well, welcome back to, as I said, the main part of the show. It isn't often that we get a chance to have a visit from an Edmonton oiler in their home to allow us into there, especially to see animals that were previously adopted from us. Ryan Smith and his family did just that and welcomed us over for a chat about the adoption of two kittens from us last October. So I am excited to share this with you. This interview is with the entire Smith family as they talk about how adopting from the Edmonton Humane Society has actually taught their kids about responsible pet ownership. So I want to thank you very much for bringing us into your home and especially after a few months after you adopted the cats, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Take me back to when you first brought them home. What was all of that like? It must have been a great day. It was. It was really exciting and uh, we had been there visiting the day before and kind of had picked out the cats that the girls loved and dad was on the road so we waited till Ryan got home and we went the next day to adopt. Why did this happen in the first place? Whose idea was it? This one over here. <laughs> it was Elizabeth's idea. Yeah, she's a big cat lover. Okay, so did you kind of work on mom and dad for a while or what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did. All right, yeah. and so dad had promised her um, when one we were in, day when I we, get a yeah, but we were in the United States. Okay, right. So we said, if we ever move back to Canada, I don't think we were traded two seconds when that was the yeah. hey. hey yeah. <laughs> but they remembered, did yeah. they? Oh yeah, they <laughs> all remember right. things. All right. So Ryan, what made you decide? All right, coming back to Edmonton, the stability or or what? Well, obviously, being back here in Edmonton, it's just a it's a nice feeling um, being here in the city in the community. Uh, it's been great uh, for Stacy and I. The two girls were born. Elizabeth and uh, Isabella were born here in Edmonton. So uh, we feel this is home for us. Okay. And then with that, knowing that you're home, then you finally said, okay, let's add more pets <laughs> because you have two dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> We have our first one over there. He's 12. Okay. Uh, uh, Beaker. <laughs> He's a lab. And then uh, Gundy is uh, the five-year-old German Shepherd. And then, yeah, adding two more kittens, uh, obviously, Elizabeth's got a little soft spot in my heart, so adding, uh, adding that one, and I thought, you know what, we might as well get two at the same time, and <laughs> no better place than getting it from the Humane Society. So we're blessed to have the kids that we do, and the dogs that we do, but uh, we just felt that uh, animals were animal lovers, and uh, there's some animals out there that uh, that don't get a good life, and uh, or don't have a life at all, so... Um, we're, we're very blessed to have the homes that we do and uh, to accommodate some more uh, um, family members. Family members is, uh, <laughs> is why we, we chose Humane Society. We went three or four times before we adopted, so they got to see firsthand what it was like there, and they had to see that they had to leave the cats behind, and so it was a big responsibility um, because we talked a lot the first day about not just picking on an impulse because that's what's happened sometimes to those pets is that, you know, the people didn't, weren't prepared for it and then had to give them up. So we, we were able to, I hope, kind of educate them in that as well so that they understand that we're helping to give a home to these these kittens and they've become a part of our family, but that they couldn't just do it on a whim. It just makes me feel a lot, um, makes me feel a lot more um, happy because they are friendly and <laughs> it's like a best friend. <laughs> And they seem so comfortable with you. What about you, Elizabeth? I think the same. Cuddly and cozy? Yeah. 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 And Alex, what do you think of all the animals you have, all your pets? Uh, I don't get a pet. I just want to play hockey. Well, I just want to play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants all right, to that's a fine mindset, too. <laughs> As a city, we're blessed to have the Edmonton Humane Society because that is an exceptional hmm. Uh, place. Uh, even the facility is amazing and the, the animals have great places to live and um, I think that we're, we're blessed to have that but also I think that people should go there before they go to a pet store or you know find a breeder because there are lots of animals and they're so sweet and I think when you go there 
it's a really difficult thing to leave without a Yeah, it's a great experience companion. going there. And leave your preconceived notions behind because he wasn't a cat person. Nope. <laughs> oh, and you're made a him a cat person. Early person. On, yes. We made now he snuggles up with the cats yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah. All right, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> And now, from a visit to an Oilers home, to a visit from three Oilers in our shelter. Taylor Hall, Jordan Everly, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins came to our shelter a couple of weeks ago, all part of a story that TSN was doing leading up to Valentine's Day about them falling in love with our shelter dogs. The trio of heartthrobs were never in our building before, and we're very impressed with the Edmonton Humane Society. Here's a chat I had with them during their time in our building. All right, guys, you were in our building about an hour or so getting a feel for it. What do you think? It's awesome. I mean, it's great what you guys are doing here. Um, you know, we, we, we just came to see some dogs. I fell in love with uh, Farley over there, and he's, uh, it's fun. I mean, you, when you need a smile, you can just put it on your face just by hanging out with him for a bit. And, of course, with your busy lifestyle, it's pretty hard to have one now, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, like you said, I mean, it's tough always on the road or doing something, but, I mean, definitely in the future, I can see that it, definitely uh, an option to adopt one from here. I mean, it's... Great what you guys are doing here, and the dogs are extremely cute. And Taylor? Yeah, for sure. It's um, like I said, it's hard to you know have a dog with our lifestyle, but you know at the same time you you want to be able to give a dog a good home, and, and that's what you guys are doing here. So um, whenever I want a dog, I know where to come for sure. Well, that's good to know because few people realize all of them are spayed or neutered before they're adopted, uh, microchipped. We really help to control the pet population here. Yeah, that's good. I mean, obviously it's a problem. Sometimes you get uh, you know quite a few, and then they don't find a home, and that's uh, it's good. I, I own two dogs at home and uh, obviously I grew up with them they're you know some of my favorite animals so you just hang out with them and uh, you know they're never mad at you so um, like I said I, I fell in love with the guy back there and I'm sure he's not gonna be on the market too soon because how cute he is yeah and very popular building we've been open for about almost three years now and we give people <coughs> tools to be responsible pet owners with a lot of programs in that so by you being here I think it really helps with getting people's attention and, and that sort of thing so yeah, we're glad that you are able to to take part today even though maybe you weren't planning to. <laughs> yeah, it was our pleasure for sure. That was great. And you know, we used to have Zach Stortini as our main media <laughs> spokesperson uh, uh, for the Humane Society through the Oilers and we're looking for another one. <laughs> Are you interested? We'd love to come back. I mean, it's great. Like I said, you come here and you get, you get to put a smile on your face just by hanging out with for a little bit. So I'm sure uh, we'd all do it again. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sure yep. we'll be all uh, back one day. Good. Sure. Yeah. Being that you fell in love with some dogs. <laughs> exactly. No. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. So much fun. We're going to take a short break. Coming up, the hottest new items at Bingo's Pet Shop, of course, right inside the Edmonton Humane Society building, including what is considered by some to be the world's best cat bed window perch. And, of course, we answer your questions from the chat room. Don't go away. He's had his weekly bath. Now he's looking good. And he's cruising the neighborhood. He's spreading his stuff. And he's looking tough, but he's not looking for a fight, he's looking for some love. He knows that somewhere down the street, there's a girl dog waiting there in heat. He can hear her howling with desire, now he's jumping the fence to put out the fire. Why don't you neuter that boy? Why don't you spay that girl? There's so many homeless Helpless animals in the world Do something good for society Take home a dog or cat to your family And neuter that boy And spay that girl They are God's creatures and that's the truth They're not put here to be abused and Dogs and cats are like me and you Sometimes they need a little love Bless you for all you do, and if 
the animals to talk They'd think you too Why don't you neuter that boy Why don't you spare that girl There's so many homies Helpless animals in the world Do something good for society Take home a dog or cat to your family And now we mark an important milestone here on our show. It has been a year now since Paradise Pet Centre in St. Albert and the Edmonton Humane Society partnered up. Paradise Pet Centre agreed that selling dogs and cats in their store just wasn't a good idea. So with our help, they teamed up with a few rescue groups in our region to take in their animals and adopt them out instead of selling them, with every penny of the adoption fee going right to the rescue group. Some of our rabbits, guinea pigs and reptiles have even been adopted out through the pet store. How many have they found homes for altogether? The answer and much more about the success of this program coming to you right now. How's it going? Fantastic. 100% fantastic. Um, the community feedback has been uh, really supportive of the decision that we made to uh, support rescues instead of uh, dealing with breeders. And also uh, from the staff that work in our store. Um, our staff are extremely proud to be working here because of what we're doing. Oh yeah. And I remember back when we were meeting leading up to the official partnership and, you know, changing something after 30 some years, mm -hmm. naturally there were a little bit of nerves in that, but boy, I bet you're so glad. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, we were kind of hesitant and that was one of the things that we were talking about was uh, the loss of revenue for, uh, you know, dealing with the breeders. Uh, but we've actually balanced out now, um, so we've had people come back into the store that haven't been shopping our store for a while because we were dealing with breeders. They're now returned, so our sales have evened out. So we're really, really excited about that. Yes, you've demonstrated that you don't have to sell dogs and cats to stay sustainable. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. Our business is still really successful, and uh, I'm really excited to see where we're going to go in the future with this. And of course, you started the trend here in Edmonton, and then PJ's Pet Center followed suit. That's right, yeah. And uh, I, I was uh, really excited to be um, an example for other stores to follow, and that was one of the reasons why we did this as well, is we just wanted to prove that, hey, we can change our business model, still be successful, so there's no reason for other stores that they can't. I'm so, of course. Now let's talk about what has happened. A lot of adoptions. Absolutely, yep. Uh, in the year of uh, 2011, uh, we've adopted close to 200 animals out uh, through wow. this uh, uh, program. So that's fantastic. Oh, Absolutely. Wow, so cats from bars. Yep, cats from the bars, uh, Barhead Animal Rescue Society, okay. and also some uh, dogs. Uh, okay. We have some in-house dogs. You and bet. what other small rescue groups have you been dealing with? Uh, we deal with SCARS, uh, Second Chance Animal Rescue society uh, we have some dogs that we keep uh, in the store here uh, as long as they're small and able to fit in our display windows and then we also host adoption days as well for bars and scars and I just have to remind everybody you have our rabbits here occasionally. Some that's of the rabbits right. from the Edmonton Humane Society you already bet. spayed or neutered and just adopted through you. Yep, that's correct. And uh, we've also had guinea pigs come through yep. uh, and the occasional budgie uh, and also some exotics like bearded dragons and other lizards as well. So if we can help out in any of those areas, I think fantastic. Yeah. Let's do it. Now sometimes we need that expertise from you as well. We mm -hmm. have an exotic and you know, Adrian, do you guys mind helping out? And you do. It just makes a huge difference. Yep, for sure. Okay, now next steps. What's going on next? Well, I I'm looking in the future to uh, um, possibly start dealing with the Reptile and Amphibian Society okay. um, and I might also be contacting other uh, clubs and rescues uh, you know and maybe go into uh, you know birds um, and reptiles uh, getting those from rescues as well. Oh wow and in the short term for fe February now. Yeah February is going to be our fundraising month um, so you can check on our website there's going to be lots of info on there as far as what's happening but it's going to be a really busy month for us to fundraise for the rescues that, that we're associated with. That's that's one thing too. Yes, you're helping to adopt out, but you're also fundraising. You're supporting us. You're supporting the small rescues. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Hey, every little bit helps, right? So, yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you again. We will keep in touch for sure. Sure, no problem. 
Every month we check in with our shelter store, Bingo's Pet Shop, to keep you connected and show you the new trendy pet care items. We take you right to the store every month and to hear from our Bingo's expert, who is the store supervisor, Nadine Johnson. Let's show you the cool new items being showcased this month. Nadine, new year, new items. Here you we betcha. are in February, and I understand you have something new for bird lovers. Uh, well, the whole thing was is people were asking for them, and I didn't bring them in until uh, I had more of a demand. So I thought, okay, if you're going to adopt from here, you should have something to take home for the evening. So I brought in small small packages of the cockatiel, and we got finch and parakeet. And I do have a little bit of, for bigger birds, conures and whatever. But I was looking for high quality. So these ones are for animals under stress because I do have a stressful situation here, especially coming from here to your home. So I got something that will help them with that. Help with their calming. Yes. And they seem very reasonably priced as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so from birds to dogs, what do you yes. have here? This is new called the Bionic. Yes. Stuffer. What's really cool with this one is it floats. Um, it's got little holes in it that you can uh, put treats in. And actually, I had one customer who took a video of her dogs playing with it. I'm trying to get her to send it to me so we can put it on her Facebook. Phenomenal. They actually fought over it with it's nothing in it. There was nothing, nothing in, it. in it. Well, it says scented. I have no I idea, the but they smell, love it. They <laughs> they absolutely love that thing. Okay, so that's new here too. Yeah, and also with dogs called Spins. What is this? Yeah, it's uh, by the company name uh, Precision, which makes our crates and our X pens, and it's an interactive toy. It's a, like they can eat it as well as play with it. Okay. So let's just give you guys a quick demo of what it looks like as you play with it. It's a really cool interactive toy for the dogs. Okay. So yeah, as they chew it, it spins, and so it's not just a, a treat, it's an interactive But they eat this. Yes, absolutely. It's put together as a toy that you, they actually will dissolve away when they eat it. Exactly. It's just like a marrow bone or cool. anything Ooh. like that. Yeah, it's pretty All cool right. for them. Okay, and now off to cats. This is a big seller here called the Huge. Kitty Cot. It is so popular. Why? We are the only ones that have it in Alberta. It's from the States. Um, it actually goes on the window. Animals love to sit on the window, so cats especially love to sit high up and feel like king of the world. Yeah. Well, this allows that, and it can go and go on any window. Exterior, we've tried it out for quite a while in the shelter before we decided to sell them. It says world's best cat bed window perch. Yeah. And pretty much any size cat can be and on here. And what was the 30 pounds yeah. was the biggest we could That's put on there. The one behind us. Yeah. 30 pounds is the biggest. That yeah. is wonderful. Kitty caught 64.99. Yes. Here. And again, all proceeds from all our sales go directly into the shelter. Absolutely. And what I also want to start promoting is our customer service. We really really make customers feel like number one. We definitely want you coming back again and again. Okay, and one way to do that is little promotions. For example, you, with every kitty cot, you get a Serta sheet. We got a bunch of these in, donated from some Serta uh, store somewhere, and uh, 80 years celebrating. And so we have them, and we're paying back to our customers. So that's Absolutely. one thing about customer service. Yep. You get that as well. Thank you very much, Nadine. Thanks, Shauna. I was trying to get it to stand up, and it didn't. Uh, time now to answer some questions that are posed to us, and I do have one. Someone wondering about what spring dog training classes that we have. Good question. Puppy, obedience, agility, feisty, fido, pit bull classes, new spring classes are starting at the end of this month and beginning of March. We have a couple of new ones. The Art of Recall and Loosh loose leash walking and this is for uh, anyone with a dog that may have a little bit of problems listening to you while you're taking it for a walk on the leash and anyone who wants to get their dog into high flyers disc dog that is a new one that we have for disc training so you can train your dog to catch a disc uh, to sign up for any of the classes just call 491-3888 491-3888 or just visit our website look on the group training page and you'll have all the information so thank you for that inquiry we are now at the end of our february 2012 show we will leave you with our puppies and kittens photo montage video in a minute so stay tuned for that but first i have to tell you about next month coming up in the march show how to protect puppies in the community from Parvo. It's a highly contagious disease spread from dog to dog by contact with feces. It can remain dormant over the winter in the soil and then be rejuvenated in the spring when it warms up. 
This can be especially severe in puppies that are not vaccinated. So we help new puppy owners protect them. We'll have all of that and, of course, much more as we always do. Stay tuned for that. And we will, of course, have our February podcast. Um, actually, that one is March 12th. Remember that. Now I have to tell you about the on-video-on-demand version of this show. That is going to be up in a couple of days, so watch for the link for that. And, of course, thank you very much to Fuse Logic Television, as usual, for donating all of the production time live broadcast for this to bring you our show every month spread the word always share 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 please for that and now here is our video montage from the puppies and kittens photos that were submitted during our february photo contest on facebook thank you for all the entries and enjoy it now I can remember when You fit in the palm of my hand You felt so good in it No bigger than a minute How it amazes me You're changing with every blink Faster than a flower blooms They grow up all too soon So let them be Cause they're only that way for a while Give them hope, give them praise, give them love every day Let them cry, let them giggle, let them sleep in the middle Oh, but let them be I never felt so much in one little tender touch. I live for those kisses, your prayers and your wishes. And now you're teaching me how only a child can see. Tonight while we're on our knees, all I ask is please let them be. Cause they're only that way for a while Give them hope, give them praise, give them love Every day, let them cry, let them giggle Let them sleep in the middle Oh, but let them Cause they're only that way for a while Give them hope, give them praise, give them love every day Let them cry, let them giggle, let them sleep in the middle Oh, but let them them 